Here we have a trapezoid ABCD. This is a right trapezoid, which means that the side AB is at 90 degrees to the basis of this trapezoid, to AD and BC. We know the lengths of both bases. And there's also a circle around here, and the circle goes through points C and D. And the side AB is tangent to the circle, this point of tangent CE laying on the side AB. And we are asked to find the distance from this point E to the side CD. And by definition of the distance from a point to a line, that is the length of a segment EF, uh, which goes from point E to point F on the side CD. In the segment, it has to be at uh, 90 degrees to CD. So how are we going to solve this problem? How can we find EF? Today I'm going to show you two ways to do that. And before each of the ways, I'm going to remind you of some theory and geometry we will need to know to solve this problem in each of the ways. Okay. So here we have a circle. And we have two lines, AB and CD, that intersect the circle at points AB and CD. And those lines also intersect each other at point O. And right now, let's consider the case when this point O is inside of the circle. In this case, the following relationship is valid between the lengths of the segments. So now, how can we remember this expression? So if you look what's happening on the left, it's points O, A, B. Those are the points that lay on one of the lines. What's on the right is really points C or D, the points that lay on the other line, okay? And each side, let's say the left-hand side, is really a product of the distances from point O, point of intersection of the lines, to the points of intersection of uh, the line with the circle, points A and B. So we have OA times OB. In the same way, what you have in the right is the distance OC times OD. Okay? Now, let's take this point O outside of the circle. So again, we have a line ABO and ODC. Uh, lines intersect the circle at point AB and point CD. Point O, point of intersection of two lines. And guess what? The same expression works for this case as well. Let's continue our investigation. Let's start with this arrangement we have here. And now let's uh, keep this point O, point A and B, wherever they are. But now let's start moving the point C. Okay, I'm gonna move it to the right. So if you move point C over here, now we have a green line, in this case point D going to go from this point to this point. Now we move it even more, we get this brown line, point D now goes here, point C is here. And we can keep moving this line to the right until we get this red line, which is a tangent to the circle. And let's call the point of tangency point E. So we can consider it a separate problem. Or we can actually see what actually happened, how we got this point. What we saw is that point C was moving slowly along this circle to the right until it reached the point E. And point D did the same thing. It was moving to the right along the circle until at, at the end it reached the point E. So essentially we can treat point E as the point where point C and D merge. So we can actually consider that point as point C, D, and E. And if you consider that point as point C and point D at the same time, this expression we already wrote is valid again. Only in this case, OC will be equal to OD, it would be equal to OE. And we can rewrite it like this. Okay? 
which is a standard way of writing this expression. Let's continue our investigation. So uh, we got our tangent line here, OE, but now let's start moving point A to the left until we get a tangent line again and point F is a point of tangency. In a similar way as we were discussing point E as a point of merger of point C and D, we can say that point F is the point of merger of point A and point B. And if we do that, really this expression and this expression work. Only now or, or A equals to OB and equals to OF. So we get this expression that OF squared equals to OE squared. But since OF and OE are positive, it simply means that OF equals to OE. It means that this length and this length are the same. And that's also a correct fact. So notice just knowing just one equation can give us results for four different problems. If you think about all these four problems together in this way, it will help you understand geometry better. Okay? Now, although I talk about four different cases, for what we need today, we just need one. Now let's look at our trapezoid. Well, uh, there's one trick in dealing with trapezoids in geometric problems. The truth is, it's often difficult to deal with trapezoids. It's much easier to deal with triangles. So the normal solution to this problem, or part of the solution, is to create a triangle out of the trapezoid. We can do it. We can get this point G here. And now we create a triangle. In fact, we created actually three triangles. So we have the small triangle GBC, we have a larger triangle GFE, and we have a big triangle GAD. Okay. So notice for all these three triangles, we have one angle of 90 degrees. They all have it. So they're all right triangles. Another thing, if you look at this angle G, they share the same. So what we have actually three similar triangles and they're similar by two angles. Now, uh, if you look at similar triangle, there's a certain ratio of the sides that stay constant when we consider uh, similar triangles. So what we can do here is we can take a side for each triangle. We're going to have a side opposite of angle G and divide the side by the side opposite of angle of 90 degrees. So for the small triangle here, we're going to take side BC and divide by side GC. For the middle triangle, we're going to take the side EF and divide by side GE. And for the big triangle, the side opposite of angle G is AD, and we're going to divide it by this side opposite of 90 degree angle, and that is GD. And those ratios should be the same for all three triangles. Now, we could have gotten these ratios actually without considering uh, similar triangles. Just notice that all these three triangles are right triangles. And the ratio we took is the ratio of the leg opposite of angle G divided by hypotenuse. And that ratio is known to be sine of angle G. Now, okay, so we got actually here not one expression, not one equation. There are actually two independent equations. Okay. So, and we have BC, which we know, EF, which we want to find, AD, which we know. But we also have these things here, GC, GE, and GD, which we don't know. Okay, but we need to have some kind of relationship between them. And that relationship could be obtained using the fact that's here on the right. So if you look what we have, the point E here is actually point E here. Point O here is the point G here. 
point B here is point C here, and the point A here is point D here. And now we can use this expression with slightly different letters. And we get an expression like this, which relates GC, GD, and GE. And that's what we need. All right, so uh, how do we find what EF is? Well, first let's look at the second fraction and the third fraction. From that equality of those fractions, we can get expression for EF through G, A, D, and G, D. But the next thing we're going to do, we're going to replace G using this expression, which get us expression like this. Now, we know A, D, but we don't know G, C, or G, D. But that we can easily get from here if we equate the first fraction and the last fraction. If we do that, this is the expression of GC over GD we're going to get through BC and AD. And we plug it here, and we get expression for EF via AD and BC. And we know both of them. And we get the answer, 4 square root of 5. We have one solution now. Let's find another one. And the new solution is going to deal with trapezoid directly. We're not going to create a triangle for that one. But before we go there, first let's review some theory. And this time, this theory is about inscribed angles. Uh, I have a video where I'm talking about inscribed angles in more details. There is a link in the description to this video. But what we need to know here is that if I have an inscribed angle like here, angle B, that is intercepting the arc AC, if I have another inscribed angle that also intercepts the same arc AC, those two angles are going to be congruent. And I can create a third one like this. It's also going to be congruent to the other two. So, and see what I'm doing here is that I'm moving this point B closer and closer to the point C. And no matter how close I get to point C, all these angles are going to be congruent to each other. So let's go to the extreme. We actually move B to the point C. And we get an angle like this, A, C, D, which, as you probably understand, is going to be congruent to the other angles. Now, the only thing we need to understand what is this CD. And it turns out that CD is actually a tangent line to the circle, and C is a point of tangency. So what we need for this problem is this. We have an angle, inscribed angle ABC, and we have this other angle, ACD, which has a tangent line as one of its sides, and those angles are going to be congruent as long as they intercept the same arc AC. All right, let's go back to our problem. Uh, the first thing we'll do, and that seems natural, is to connect all the points on the circle, points E, C, and D. Okay. The next thing uh, we want to do, we want to look at those angles we created and see if we can find any congruent angles. And one thing, let's look at this green angles, angle C here and angle E. So angle C here will be like angle B here, inscribed angle, and this angle E green angle will be like this red angle here. Okay? So they will be congruent to each other. In a similar way, if you look at this orange here and orange here angles, they're also going to be congruent to each other for the same reason. And now let's look at this bluish triangle and this yellowish triangle. Both triangles have green angles, and both triangles have angles of 90 degrees. So these two triangles are going to be similar by two angles. And now, in a similar triangles, certain ratios should be the same. And in our case, we're interested in the ratio of EF, which is the side opposite of the green angle, 
to the side AD, which again uh, the side opposite of green angle. And that ratio should be the same as the ratio of EC, which is the side opposite of 90 degrees angle, and side AD, which is also opposite of 90 degree angle. Okay, this is what we're going to get. Now we can look at other two triangles. This is blue triangle right here and yellow triangle right here. They're also going to be a similar by two angles. In this case, orange angle and angle of 90 degrees. And again, we're going to take a ratio of the sides, respective sides. Inside BC, which is opposite of the orange angle, divided by side EF, which is opposite of the orange angle. And that ratio should be the same as EC, which is side opposite of 90 degree angle, divided by side ED, which is again opposite of the 90 degree angle. Now, if you look at those two relationships, we find that the right hand side of both of them are the same. And therefore, the left hand side should be the same. And if we equate them, we get this. And from here, we can easily obtain expression for EF. EF squared will be AD times BC. And EF is going to be square root of it, which is 4 square root of 5. And that's it.